Hi, this is Rick Hirsch. This is my book too. And I'm coming to you as a, uh, an editor and publisher tonight. Uh, it's Twilight. And yet it's a little darker than Twilight. Maybe Twilight is a continuum. I think there should be another word between crepuscular and dark, dead, night, uh, which is appropriate because I'm going to be reading a chapter, um, an, an extraordinary chapter, from an upcoming book called The Flamethrowers in the back and The Seven Madmen in the front. It's one novel, and I'm not going to explain it again right here, but we will be the first press to properly publish in English Roberto Arlt's magnificent novel that has been broken into two parts uh, based on a misunderstanding um, indolence as one of our introductory um, writers puts it um, and so uh, I was thinking about it and I thought this when I'm done publishing this will be the most important thing I've done. I'm very happy to publish books of mine that strayed. Um, I'm very happy that uh, Philip Friedenberg uh, credits me with uh, way too much uh, importance in publishing his own book. Um, I'm very happy with um, every book we have for various reasons. Um, I'm very happy that David Vardaman is getting some really great readers. Uh, I'm also gr grateful that we're making uh, films now as well, but hold on to that thought. This is from what we've already published, because I didn't know we were going to be able to publish the whole thing, uh, The Flamethrowers, and um, anybody who's bought The Flamethrowers can write to me and say, can I have the full volume at half price, and I'll let you have it at half price. Um, so, uh, I don't want anybody paying 30 euros for um, a 20 euro book, which is essentially what it would be. But now, just be quiet, and uh, I'm going to read about a 9 or 10 page chapter called The Death Agony of the Melancholy Ruffian. The sun filtered through the half-open blinds of the hospital room. It washed over his face at an angle. Uselessly, Hafner tried to lift his arms to shoo away the flies, whose feelers he could feel crawling on his lips, their legs walking all over him as if he had been sculpted out of bronze. And with his head twisted on the pillow and a foggy space between his half-ajar eyelids, he lay in agony. Out of the blue, he heard someone at his side say, Who was it that shot you? El Lungo or Pibo Miflor? The melancholy ruffian wanted to open his eyes to answer, but he couldn't. He had a thirst, a terrible thirst that had cut open his tongue, and all the while the sun gleamed down a thick red mist over his eyelids. The mist was like the reflection from a forge. It penetrated through his head and punctured his brain. Greedily, he remembered the filthy pool of water beside the post of a forge when he used to play as a boy. Ah, if only he could drink from that puddle now. But now, he couldn't even lift a finger. Again, the mysterious voice, mellifluous and full of authority, buzzed in his ear. Talk. Who was it? El Lungo or Pibe Mi Flor? His thirst reached the strings, reached like strings, all the way down to his parched intestines. The small pool of water and urine where the horses were branded, just a short distance from the forge, reappeared before his eyes. Hafner anxiously desired it in his thoughts. 
He would have liked to drag himself on his knees there, stick his nose in the water and suck it down his throat. His lungs ached, but as for that, what did it matter? He knew he was going to die, but his weakness was born of this thirst that had dried out his flesh and parched his mouth like it was made out of saltpeter. And his arm that had been so strong that with a slap he had flattened so many women, now he couldn't even move it to shoo away flies. In fact, his memory was floating inside his body like gas inside of a bell. He understood he was going to die, but the conviction didn't frighten him. The sun, on the other hand, having now shot across his eyelids, displacing the red mist, stunned him as if it were tossing him on the crest of a cloud. The mysterious voice once more echoed in his ears. Who was it that shot you? El Lungo or Pibe Miflor? Is it true that you took Pibe Miflor's women from him? And another and harsher voice grumbled. We need to hang every one of these sons of bitches. The melancholy ruffian very wearily half opened an eyelid. The glass from the window gleamed like an incandescent laminated plate. A great black shadow was standing right beside him like a black mannequin. And it said... You don't remember me? I'm Officer Gomez, Detective Gomez. Who was it that shot you? El Lungo or Pibe in the floor? I just realized that if I read this whole thing, it's gonna be way too long. So there you get the first page and a half of the death agony of the Melancholy Ruffian, or of Hafner, which, what, what was it called? The Melancholy Ruffian. The Death Agony of the Melancholy Ruffian. Hafner is a great character in this book. Um, in Arlt's world, if a man flattened woman, a, women, a man flattened women, you come right out and say it. Arlt never flattened women. But characters, they do what they do. Um, this book will be out before the end of December. And uh, I recommend it the way I would recommend Moby Dick. This is perhaps the greatest Latin American novel. But as uh, many people have said, it is not just a Latin American novel. This is the novel that predicted the atom bomb, the Cold War, the death of our planet, or the people uh, on it, the, our ability, the planet won't die, of course, but he, he predicted the end of the human species, and he was right.